Hello YouTube, welcome to video number two or one on my channel properly. Uh, this one's going to be looking at the unit itself, so um, I'm going to do this. Uh, so yeah, this one's going to be looking at the... Don't fall. Stay! Yeah, so this is going to be looking at the unit. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the feel of it, as soon as I took out the box I thought it was good, um, compared to the... Hang on, can you see that from there? Moving over a bit. Um, it actually does feel better than the um, CDJs. Listen to this. It feels more sturdy. And, um, pretty much, yeah, it's sturdy. Uh, so the actual unit, obviously you've got your... Let me move this back over a second. Ooh! Well, so obviously you've got... Um, these are meant to be like two CDJs and a mixer. They feel pretty standard. Um, to most uh, CDJs. The job wheel feels like that of the CDJ 400, from which, from, from my experience anyway. Uh, on the back, we've got, I should have unplugged this before the video, hang right on. <laughs> right, so on the back, we've got, That looks good. If I don't know if you can see that on camera, can you? Yeah, you can. But that is yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So on this, on the back, we have a master ATT. I don't know what that means, but basically the volume, I assume, if it's got minus twelve dB, minus six dB, zero dB. Uh, we've got our left and right XLRs, we've got our master outs, our aux in, this could be for like EFX or well, I don't know, whatever you need it with. We've got another volume switch on the back, which I didn't see until now. On this side we've got a USB, obviously on and off button, and a DC in. And that's what we've really got on the um, back. Right, now I haven't actually done it either, but apparently you can take these legs off from the bottom. But like I say, I haven't done it. I don't really want to do it because it's not mine. Um, right. So yeah, now I'll actually have a look at the unit itself. If I just zoom in to this part for a second. Right, so this is the CDJ part of the unit. Uh, we've got our usual... Q play which finally give you it feels very similar well that feels the same as the one on the CDA 1000 um, we've got the jog wheel obviously and like I said before it feels like the one off the 400 I wouldn't say it feels the same as these but I don't know what they're called for the big ones with the blue stuff in the middle if they got an actual name I don't know say in the comment below um, we've got our loop in and out which is obviously on all CDJs apart from the CDJ 100 I believe I think that had effects instead um, pitch control obviously we've got 6, 10, 16 and 100 of range I don't know hopefully oh, this video is not very planned this is just the top of my head and I'm going to unedit it right uh, we've got the vinyl mode obviously and speed uh, vinyl speed and adjust. So obviously if you've got there it'll play instantly, if you've got it there it'll go and if you stop it with that on it'll be like turning the turntable off by the power to slowly stop. So that's, oh and hot cue sorry, they got them on CDJs as well but this one's got five which is good. It's got, also got slip mode which is the same as that on the CDJ 900. Uh, I've yet to use that very much but I've had a go on it and it's Good fun. I'll show you that in the next video. Well, it's a different video. We've got Needle Search, which is on the CDJ2000. Oh, I use it all the time now. I don't know if you can see it on camera. You see when it's on, but there's also a little strip here. Uh, it lights up red. It tells you how far on the track you are. So, like, it's uh, well, similar. Um, if you've seen the CDJ800, it'll be like that. Well, yeah, just the 800 I'm going to go with now. Probably a lot more, but... Um, now, that's all the similarities done, but what they added to this... 
So they've got a mic, I don't know what to call it, a mic mixer at the top if you want. So you've got the mic one in, you've got the volume, low, mid and high EQ for the microphone. You've got the microphone on and talk over. If you don't know what talk over is, if you have the microphone plugged in and add it on talk over, when you speak, the volume automatic, automatically, automatically comes down. Uh, so you can speak over it clearly. Um, right, I've yet to play with this button. It says shift. Don't know what it means, but I'll have a go with it later. Uh, we've got this. I had lots of fun with this. Basically, when you make a loop, so you make a four beat loop, do that and it will like trim half a loop each time so you can get the wah wah wah. I'll show you that later. Now, I believe they've got this on the CDJ 2000, but it's not a knob, it's a button. If you keep pushing the button, it will make it shorter. Um, lock, that's obviously, I haven't really used it, but it says lock, so. Uh, down here, underneath the pitch control, we've got a sync button. Uh, that obviously syncs the beat. Right, I haven't, well, I have used it, but I really need someone to comment below how the hell do I turn it off? Because as soon as I push it, it's synced for the whole session, and I don't know how to turn it off. You don't just push it like I thought you would. So yeah, don't know how to do that. It's pretty much all of the buttons covered now, apart from shift, which I don't know. And this one up here, which is low, which is obviously you load the track onto it. So that's about it. That's, I'll show you more when it's turned on. But now we'll look at the mixer. Just move this over. Is that maximum zoom? Yeah, all right. So it's not really much to look at on here, it's the same as most mixers. You've got your crossfader, which is quite loose, good for scratching I suppose. Because you can also change the curve of it, you've got through, smooth and instant, so it's just like that. Each channel has a fader start. But one bad thing about this, which I like doing on, when I'm playing in clubs and I've got a DJM. Um, if you put the crossfader on through and turn the fader starts on, you can actually start the track with the up faders. You can't on this, you can only do it with the crossfader. That's right, because it's nice to push play, which I normally do anyway, but it's good to play with that sometimes, it gets some loops. But crossfader reverse, which is obviously, so obviously the crossfader, when it's on the left side, is going to be for the left deck, and the right side is going to be for the right deck. But obviously you've got it on reverse, the right deck could be on the left, etc, etc. Over here we've got an effect section, like you do on most, well, all DJMs I suppose. So you've got, up here you've got which channel you want it on. They're called A and B on here, not 1 and 2, but you can call it 1 and 2 if you want. So you've got A, B, Master, Mic and Aux. Mic and Aux are on the same one, but obviously you can affect the auxiliary, whatever you've got coming in, or you can have it set to, so when you do that, the EFX, which I haven't got, I haven't got any effects, it'll come in and you can do your stuff on there. You've got Effect Select. Um, there's no display on here because you see it on, all on the screen. Uh, parameter, which is time, and depth and level, well, level depth, which is basically wet and dry, and your on-off button. Uh, for the time effect, you've got a tap button down here to tap in the BPM. Now, a good thing with this mixer or console as a one is you've got a separate effects section for each channel, so you can have a filter on here and filter on there, get some nice. Um, effect going on, like low pass, high pass, and just get stuff going on. Uh, for EQ, it's pretty standard. We've got trim, mid, low. Yeah, high, mid, low, sorry. I had to think then. Um, in the middle here, we've got master, that's just one knob. And headphones, we've got the set so you can hear the cue or the master, and obviously master level. And below that, we have our cue buttons. It's all pretty standard. Uh, faders feel really nice in this mixer actually. Um, I've used the DJM 800, uh, but obviously it wasn't brand new when I used it, so they could have been loosened by then. But it, well, from what I've experienced, these feel better. They're like, I don't know, they're really like, smooth and they're not too loose. You've got, really got all control over it. Um, all these buttons up here, I'll go into more detail when I've got the thing on. It's basically for searching your songs. Uh, you've got the knob up here which is for scrolling down your songs. Uh, that's pretty much, I've pretty much covered it already. I'll have to show you the rest of it when the console's turned on. But one thing I'm going to show you, and leave it on that note, 
is, if I have it turned on, I shall show in the next video. It gives a nice little intro display, but I'll show you that on the next video. Thanks for watching. Click the link straight up. Oh, there'll be a link in the description, or you can just click on the video after. I'll put a little thing that says next video here. Just click on that. I'll take you to the next video. Cheers.